everyone, my name is Shauna, in case you don't know, and welcome back to another video. It seems like everyone recently has been doing the Contradictions book tag, and I haven't gotten around to doing this one yet, so I thought it was the perfect time to do this tag today. So the Contradictions book tag was originally created by only a for a page, and I will link their YouTube channel down in the description below. It's hard to describe what this tag is about exactly, but as you hear me go over the answers, hopefully it'll make sense why this is called the Contradictions book tag. I'm very excited to do this tag, so let's crack on into this. First things first, I love this genre but I didn't like this book. So there's a lot that I could choose for this. I love a lot of different genres, but I hate a lot of books in my favorite genres. So I had a lot of different options that I could choose for this. I just decided to choose though The Shadow in the Glass. This is by J.J.A. Harwood. The Shadow in the Glass is a young adult fantasy book and young adult fantasy has been one of my favorite genres for a really long time. But The Shadow in the Glass just did not do it for me. This book is extremely slow and it didn't help that the chapters can be up to like 100 pages long. Oh my gosh! No, my page bent somehow. Oh no, I don't know how that happened. The Shadow on the Glass is a Cinderella retelling, but it's like really depressing. There's tons of triggering content. It's really slow and boring. And I didn't like any of the characters. I think there was like one character that I felt like sympathetic towards, but I wasn't like a huge fan of her. So like, there just wasn't much going for this book. Like it sounds great in concept. It's about this girl who works for this evil master who's sort of like her evil stepfather. They're like living in really bad conditions and she goes to the library every night to like escape and like get away. But then one night when she is reading books in the library as her like escape from reality, she gets a fairy godmother, but the fairy godmother seems like too good to be true right off the bat, but she falls for it and she makes some wishes that have disastrous consequences. It sounds pretty good in theory but it just did not work for me. Next up is I rarely read this genre but I loved this book. I don't really read horror that often. I've only really read like I think maybe two horror novels that I'm fully aware of horror. There could have been some thrillers that I've read that technically count as horror. But anyways, one of the horror books that I read that I really enjoyed was 10 by Gretchen McNeil. This is about a bunch of teens who go to this island in the Pacific Northwest for a party and a bunch of killings happen. It's really intense. It's really gory. However, I really enjoyed it. I couldn't put it down. I read it in just like a couple days. It is so good. I don't really want to dive into more horror because I hate when I watch something scary or read something scary and lose sleep over it. But this one was fantastic. So maybe, maybe I'll give horror another shot someday. But for now, this is the only horror book that I actually enjoy. So yeah. Question number three, I love this trope, but I didn't like this book. I love the enemies to lovers trope if it's done well, which unfortunately a lot of times it isn't done well. I started liking the enemies to lovers trope like before I understood what enemies to lovers was because I really liked Dreary and Germione fan fiction. <laughs> But it's true, they're enemies, and then the fanfiction makes them lovers, like, yeah. I mean, granted, I have read books with enemies to lovers, but, like, that was my first introduction to enemies to lovers fanfiction. But anyways, I read a book that was pitched as enemies to lovers, and I didn't like it, and this book is called A Fair Warning. This is by Diana Roman. I got this one off of NetGalley, and I thought it would be interesting, and I believe the author, like, posted in a Goodreads group that I was in and was like, hey, I need reviewers, and I was like, you know what, I'll give it a try. I like romance novels and it's enemies to lovers, but oh my lord, this book was awful. And like, I don't wanna hate on people who enjoy the book, but like, if you enjoyed this book, can you tell me why you enjoyed the book? So it's about this gal who just recently got a divorce because her husband cheated on her and it's about this guy who, her and the guy have sort of been like butting heads since they were kids. She essentially has like been a jerk to him for the longest time and he's been a jerk back in response. And it's sort of like their romance and how they get involved with each other. But like, it's really bad because the guy is a cop who abuses his power that he has as a cop and the girl is a bartender and the first sexual moment that they have together she rapes him because if someone says no even if you think they want it it's rape and she did that to the man so i'm like why the frick do people like this book and it sexualizes like tons of things in this book that shouldn't be sexualized the description of this book makes it sound like there's so much potential but when i actually read it i was like Oh my gosh, I wish I would have never requested this book on NetGalley. Anyways, I do love Enemies to Lovers, I just find that sometimes it is not done very well. I'm currently reading another book that's sort of Enemies to Lovers right now and it's like, eh. <laughs> like, 
I don't know, just like, if you're gonna do enemies to lovers, like, please make any, like, sexual things consensual, like, yeah. That's all I'm gonna say. A lot of times in enemies to lovers, sexual things become not consensual and I do not approve of that. I love enemies to lovers but if you aren't gonna get consent from both characters in these sexual steamy scenes, don't do it, you know? Anyways, let's move on to something more positive. This one is, I hate this trope but I loved this book. I hate fake dating. It doesn't end well a lot of the time and I just don't like it. Then you know they're gonna fall together too so it feels really cheesy and I just don't like fake dating as a trope. However, a book that I read that had fake dating in it that I really loved is this one, A Lot Like Adios by Alexis Daria. This is one about childhood best friends who became enemies and then they come back and become lovers again and they are fake dating for a portion of this book. But I really enjoyed this one. I thought it was fantastic. Very adult and content matter but such a great book and I can't wait to read more by this author. Also, in case you don't know, yes, it is a guy and a girl together, but they are both bisexual, so that's pretty cool. Most of the time when I see bisexual rep, it's a same gendered couple, but this time it is different genders, so I thought that was cool. Yeah, I don't know why, but like most books that I read with bisexual characters, they're always dating someone of the same gender, and I'm like, can we get a little bit of variation up in here? Because when it is bisexual, you like all genders or you like two or more genders. So yeah, really enjoyed this one. Next up is I love this author, but I didn't like this book. So there is an author named Lois Lowry and Lois Lowry is an author who I first read her book, Number of the Stars, which is a World War II book about the Holocaust. And I really enjoyed that one as a kid. And then I read The Giver. I loved The Giver. I've read The Giver several times. Then I read Gathering Blue, which is the sequel to The Giver. And I was like, mm, this is okay, but it isn't as good. But then I read Messenger, the third book in The Giver series, and it was complete crap. And I feel so bad saying that because I love Lois Lowry. I think she is an incredible author. However, Messenger is just like so awful. It's so boring. The characters aren't likable and the author's writing style feels very different in this book from her other books which is not a good thing especially considering the fact that this is like the third book in a series like why is she changing up her writing style in the middle of a series? So yeah I didn't like Messenger. I still love Lois Lowry and I always have great memories of her books but I just think that her books are not for me anymore. The next prompt is, I previously disliked a book by this author, but I loved this book. So I used to do this thing in school called Battle of the Books, which is where there's like, I think 15 books and you like get a team and you compete in these trivia questions. I sucked at it, but I did participate in it. And one year I had to read Poppy by Avi or Avi. I don't know. I always said Avi starting off and then the like moderators of the trivia told me it was Avi. So say Avi but I don't know if that's right. Anyways Poppy is a book about like a field mouse and I was so bored throughout that whole book like I hated it and I was like I'm never reading another book by this author again. I did not like it at all and then I got to middle school and another one of her books was on the reading list and I was like crap looks like I'm gonna have to read another one of her books. So the one that I read was The True Confessions of Charlotte Doyle and I was expecting to hate this one. However, I was hooked from the first chapter. It is so good. I don't actually remember too much about this book because I read it several years ago, but I remember really enjoying it. It is a historical young adult fiction and it is a great book. I do recommend it. I just remember having such fond memories of reading this book. And I remember the copy of the book that I was reading was so well loved that it was falling apart. I got it from the library. So like tons of people read this book. I don't really know anybody who's read this book and didn't like it. It's like that good of a book, but I wouldn't have read this book if it wasn't on Battle of the Books. So I didn't like the author's first book so I was glad that I gave this author another chance because Battle of the Books forced me to. Next up, I love this cover but I didn't like this book. I'm a huge cover buyer. I always tell myself I shouldn't be a cover buyer. I should buy based on the description of books and on social media if there's giveaways and the giveaway is for a book with a pretty cover I'm always joining it which like I know I shouldn't because giveaways are giving away the books for free like I should read the description and only request books if they generally interest me. I just don't always do that. This one I liked the cover and I did request it too in part because it sounded interesting but it turned out to be a massive disappointment and that was The Last Legacy by Adrienne Young. That cover is beautiful and makes it seem like there's going to be a lot of fantasy elements in the book. There's not fantasy elements. The only fantasy elements to this book is that it is 
set in a world that doesn't exist like there's no other fantasy parts to this book i gave this book three stars i thought it was like just okay i liked the author's writing style didn't like the characters found the pacing to be a bit slow and found the story as a whole to be uninteresting so unfortunately this book was not for me but i do love this cover so much and i'm not normally a fan of people's faces on book covers but i think that this one was done really well with her hair splayed out like that and with like the flames in her eye i thought this book was really pretty but i just didn't really like the book and the final question is i don't like this cover but i loved this book oh my gosh i'm gonna have to show a book by one of my favorite authors and <sighs> i don't want to hate on this cover because i love this author so much but like I don't like people's faces on covers and this is the second book in the series and the first book had this cover that was like super awesome I don't really know how to describe it like cartoony it looked really cool it looked really epic and then she got a cover rebrand I don't think that this was her choice I think it was the publisher's choice however it's just people's faces on the book and it has a black background I believe that there's a newer edition of this one with a different background but like it's still just people right there and like the guys are just like you know they're like like trying to make their lips look big and pally but I feel like this book is such a great book but this cover puts people off from it and the rebrand of the first cover too is very similar it's just generic people standing there it's not adding anything to the story it's not enticing people and I feel like it will put people off from reading this series because it's a series about a school for scam artists with like tons of twists and turns and some romance that's young adult such a great series but like you need a different cover it needs a new cover tour team can you like change the cover again I'd be willing to buy the whole series again with new covers that actually look interesting but I doubt tour team will do any new covers for this series unless it gets like tons of readers so read this book so that we can get a new cover because I really want a new cover for this book there's so many different possibilities of what you could do and we just got that I was so upset with the cover change but I'm like I love this book too much I'm still gonna pre-order I'm still gonna read it even though it has like an awful cover anyways that was all for this book tag there is a ninth question that says tag someone I would tag someone but like it feels like everyone and their mothers have already done this tag but if you're one of those people who haven't done the tag yet then all the questions for this tag will be down in the description below feel free to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to me if you haven't already I upload videos twice a week my next video will be uploaded this Friday and my next book related video in particular will be uploaded next Tuesday so videos on every Tuesday and Friday I hope all of you are having a great week and I'll see all of you in my next video until next time goodbye